Okay. Okay. Mark, can I say something? Our December meeting of our Innovation Academy is now called to order. If you will stand, please, we'll do our National Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now it's the Texas flag. Under the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. We want to thank all of you who made it out today to our, to our board meeting. Do we have any visitors? Did you have one? We have one visitor. Thank you for being here today. She is. Um, you want to introduce yourself? Introduce yourself. So they care of you. Um, I'm Randy Morton. I'm teaching fourth grade at the IA, and I graduated in May with my leadership degree, and so I'm here doing hours Thank you. Thank you for being here. We do let our records show that we do have a, a quorum present. And our first action on our item agenda, our first item on our agenda is our consent agenda. And uh, the superintendent sent out an electronic copy of our last board me meeting minutes. And uh, I believe our board members had an opportunity to review those minutes. If do we, either one of our board members have any questions about the minutes, you're satisfied with the minutes. Do I have a motion from a board member to accept the minutes? Okay. Yeah. And do I have a second? Second. We have a motion by Dr. Dykes and a second by Mr. Humphreys to accept the minutes. All in favor of the motion, sign of saying aye. 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 If, you're, if anybody opposes, same sign. Motion carried for the first item on the action agenda. Now we have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we have ten items on the action agenda that uh, involves, no, we have, I'm, no, I'm sorry, we have, first one is a budget amendment. We have a budget amendment for 2014, 2015, that requires action. <laughs> and I'm gonna turn that over to. So just, just to kind of keep confusion from happening, in a minute you're going to see a report on the audit that was done two years ago. But finally, as Pass all of the TEA hoops. So you're going to see that. This budget amendment is for the past uh, school year, the 2014 2015 school year. Right now we have our external auditor that uh, has been inside a couple times already. And uh, but basically, what this amendment is looking to do is clean up things, put them in the right uh, unit codes in the right place. And is it, do, board members, do you see the, the budget amendment? Do you see the new sheet, the supplemental sheet, the budget amendment? Mm -hmm. And then we'll see the, uh, two pages down, but they have the current year. 
let's do, let's, let's do 14, 15. Since they are listed, an individual will do. That's basically we're just moving against money out of maintenance and operation and construction to cover some of uh, the expenses that uh, just kind of put some things right. But we have the money, that's not an issue. We're just basically just moving it from one uh, account to another one separate account. So do we have a board a board member that has a question about that 1415 budget amendment? It's, it's, it's on the UT Tile Innovation Academy sheet. It's on this supplemental sheet. So from two years ago, we thought we had a, a we were in the black by kind of without. Okay, and then last year we're thinking we're in the black by an additional Two hundred, or does that sixty above that one forty? Yeah, one hundred forty plus another two forty six something around there. Okay. We don't have so that's where you get a four. Where do you think that we're going to enter this fiscal year at four hundred? Right, sorry, not one of this year. One of this gotcha. year. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> and I understand that whenever we, we do take a look at these budgets, we are trying to build a fund balance because we know that sometime in the future the TEA is going to require us to have a fund balance for so many days of operating expenses. So on action item four, what we, we will need is a budget amendment, a motion to approve the budget amendment for 2014 and 15. That's action item number four. Do we have a board member who's Sorry. comfortable enough to make that motion? Um, I'll make a motion that we uh, accept the budget amendment for the 2014-2015 school year. We have a motion by Mr. Flynn to accept, to, to, to go ahead and accept the 14-15 budget amendment. Do we have a second? We have a second by Ms. Dr. Dykes. A motion and a second. All those in favor of the motion, sign aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. The next item is item five, budget amendment for 2015-16 school year, our current school year. And it's on a separate sheet of paper. And the superintendent, who will make that? That's the budget amendment. Basically, we're trying to get it Okay, you're taking it out of maintenance uh, and operations and you're putting it into structure. What better place to put it? That's where it needs to be. Do we have a motion to accept that budget in a minute? We have a motion by Dr. Dykes. Do we have a second? Second by Mr. Humphrey. Mr. Humphrey. Mr. Humphrey. No, Mr. Humphrey. No, no, not by Mr. Humphrey. By Mr. Aldridge. I'm sorry. By Mr. Aldridge. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. The motion carried. Item 6, <laughs> Module 100, Financial Operations. Superintendent, do you have, so are you going to? Yes, um, so basically, as you know, um, board members, we talked um, in our last meeting about how that we are working with the Texas Charter School Association, um, looking at policies, um, and one thing that we are very thankful for is that now the Texas Charter School Association has developed model policies for our charter schools to adopt. Um, one thing that we have found is that um, oftentimes they do not consider the that 
uh, charter schools that have ties to universities. So it's not as easy for us to simply go in and enter our name into the highlighted spots and adopt the policy. So um, at the last board meeting, we, we discussed a few things. We went back um, and addressed those. And so this is the updated model, uh, module 100, which addresses financial operations. And um, Jane, if you can help me um, talk to, about the things that we looked at the last board meeting and the adjustments that we made. Um, in the finance one hundred model, the, um, the primary uh, concerns were with regard to the board approving um, certain expenses. So we changed the wording basically on the uh, purchasing of contracts and things like that, where it basically just says the university policies take precedence, obviously. Um, and then uh, on the sections with regard to uh, grants and things, uh, fraudulent misconduct and all of that, it had originally said that the Superintendent would report that directly to TEA. We have that she would report it or to the board, excuse me. Um, we reworded it to where she would report it directly to the university. university. Um, since the board doesn't really approve and manage those grant funds. Um, and then lastly, uh, the last two major pieces at the end were with regard to uh, the property. Uh, investment of funds. The, inve the investment of funds basically says that uh, we don't have investments that all of our the university invests funds and you know the IA does not. Um, the last piece was the property with regard to real estate. Um, originally, the wording basically says that all real estate owned by the school district is the property of the public, and therefore, if we close, it belongs to the public. Um, that was changed to basically say that IA does not have authority to own any property, that all of our property is uh, leased through a rental agreement with the charter holder of the university, and that the only items that are considered public property would be um, actual uh, items purchased with the funds, such as computers and tables and furniture and those types of things, but no rules. And those were the changes, that the edits that were made. And that's reflected in the copy that you received electronically. I do have a copy if anybody wants to review it, um, but it is, again, that those are the changes that were made since our last meeting. That's a, that, that is a, that, that begs the question from me. Uh, how, how strong is the governance of our board if, if all, of the, all of that is taken away? If the authority to, to make those decisions is, decisions is taken away from us and given to the university, what good is our, uh, why are we here? <laughs> <laughs> President. Because of that. And uh, TEA is well aware of it. Uh, we've been asked to, to create a special a special interest group that would uh, maybe have some input with TEA and, and the legislation on helping them realize that we're very unique and that trying to be held to the same standards as the rest of the charters whenever we're under basically a different law. Uh, it's as unfair to us. Hopefully, some of those things okay, someday, someday will be. <laughs> and during our meeting, we all had the same concerns, everything from personnel to finances to purchasing to, I mean, it was just so interesting to be in the room with, with individuals that were basically walking in the same, uh, taking the same journey with us that, you know, and TEA was at the table as well. And they were very supportive and very open to say, we don't have all the answers. You know, you guys are very unique. We, we really don't know there's a problem until you bring it to our attention. You know, um, and so they, they do want us to be a voice um, and to come together and, and address these things because what they would like to do is they would actually like to take this model policy and now create one that's for charters and then one that's for university charters based on the feedback that we're providing them. Because when they created this in their mind, it was good for all charters because it, it, it addressed charter law. But when we then when we brought it to their attention that some of the things that you're citing in here is against the university policies, therefore, you know, we have to we have to make edits where you said not to make an edit. Then that brought that 
you know, brought attention to the, the issues that we're facing. So, I um, will say that during that, the first set that we provided y'all, um, we only made those four edits this time, but that first set that we provided to y'all had, I mean, we had taken out a large chunk of it to even present you that piece because um, we had to really read through everything that was in there and say, no, that doesn't apply to us, no, that doesn't apply. So we had taken a lot, substantial amounts mm -hmm. out even before we presented it to you the first time. So it sounds like we don't have a choice, boy, but, but to make a motion to accept it. So, uh, uh, do I have there's a TVA that's making that taking away our choice? It's this is like, I can give you an example. Chief Tyler Collins, I can give you an example that came out of the meeting. Uh, the legislation passed a law this year that, that schools aren't paid by the number of days that they have service, but by the number of minutes. Yes, so there has to be 76,000 minutes and 420 minutes a day. Right now, we don't need 420 minutes a day. And uh, so the question was, you know, we have approval from TEA on one side that we can meet the amount of time that we have, and then you have this legislation that went through that says that we don't meet the amount of time, so they're going to prorate our funding. And uh, we went to TEA, they said, we don't have an answer. They went to the state legislation, and they said, we don't have an answer. But the only good thing that came out of it is we realized it doesn't affect us this year. So next year we may have to make another amendment to, you know, just depending on how it goes. You know, so we're, we're really trying to, to fight those things, those battles with the TEA and the legislation to the U.S. schools. All right. Yes. Do we have a motion to accept the Module 100 financial operations? A motion by Mr. Humphrey. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Dr. Dykes. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed say aye. Motion carried. District continuous and no, module, the module, module 300 three. general school operations. Um, module 300 deals with general school operations within this module. Again, this is a module that we got from the Texas Charter School Association. We made the, the first round of edits that were presented at the last meeting. Um, there was one concern um, within the module it stated regarding the final approval of the curriculum. Within our um, charter it is noted that the university oversees our curriculum and not the board and so that was one thing that that was the edit that we made in this updated module 300 it's noted that now that the it's it's overseen by the university and the assistant soup of curriculum any questions <laughs> <laughs> so that's the only edit that was made and that that aligns with our charter. If, if we if we it's in our charter that it's our curriculum is overseen by the university, so there has to be alignment within the policy. Do we have any questions or any discussion from any board member? I think it goes back to your question before the purpose of the board. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not trying to be, yeah. you know, well, that's, these that's coming true. from the, this didn't come, the document, the model 300 came from the charter school association. Correct. Didn't come from the state, came from the charter school association. And they're writing it for most charter, charter schools, but since we're a university one, we're having to adapt that and basically take away. So, the, some of the things that align with the charter laws because with, of university. With the university yes, charter laws, yes. right. With the, and we have to stay aligned against. with our charter, but again, it goes back to Dr. Vaughn's question, I think, of the board on the... The governor's power. We, don't, we, oh, have, uh, we have very little. Yes. I agree. I second that motion. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and believe it or not, the, the audit approval of the audit is the one thing you cannot delegate. <laughs> right, because that can be a solution. I will note in that particular 300 module, a lot of that um, regarding the curriculum is basically that um, we will use our funds appropriately to purchase the instructional materials allotment. It's that, that you essentially you're responsible to make sure you know, the executive director, which is the superintendent, um, you know, uses the funds appropriately to purchase and follows the TEA guidelines on, on those types of things. Um, so really it's more from like the financial aspect of making sure we're spending our funds in the appropriate category. The flow chart is very interesting. Of course, that has nothing. That that's a different 
ball game, I guess, from the, the, the motion we have to make to accept this yeah. module. So we have go. a choice on it. We, it sounds like we Well, we want to have policies. I mean, we've got to have policies. That's kind of the thing that we're running into right now is the policies that were accepted year one were not local policies. Um, you know, legal policies don't have to be accepted by the board because they're legal, they're law. But your local policies, you've got to have, be able to pinpoint in the event there is a question regarding our finances or regarding our operations to some type of policy. We need a motion to accept Module 300 General School Operations. Motion by Mr. Humphrey, just now. Mr. Aldridge, Mr. Aldridge. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Flynn. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say aye. Motion carried. District Continuous Improvement Plan. So the District Continuous Improvement Plan is a document that is a working document. Um, it covers several, seven goals. Um, these goals are aligned with um, pretty much broad categories. Um, for example, when you look at goal one, it looks at basically uh, student achievement, academic achievement. When you're looking at goal two, it looks at a strong curriculum with the integration of technology. Goal three looks at a safe and orderly school climate. Um, goal four addresses a partnership not only with the school and parents, but the community at broad. Um, goal five looks at attendance directly because we know attendance is tied directly to funding and so you want to definitely have a goal that addresses that. Um, goal six looks at um, ensuring that students are university ready and so those things that you have in place to support them. And goal seven looks at teacher quality and, and PD that you're providing. So within these goals as a district, we take the, the broad goal and then break it down, and it's broken down into um, actual activities that align with those goals. Um, who is in, uh, uh, responsible for overseeing those activities, um, looking at a timeline, when is this taking place, looking at resources, is this going to be funded locally or is it going to be funded through some type of Title I funds or grant. Um, looking at what data we're collecting to evaluate it to say that we actually did it, and then looking at some summative evaluation in the end. Um, so within our charter, we took these broad, these seven broad goals and then began to break down into activities of everything that we're doing that align with those goals. And we, that's how we developed our uh, district improvement plan. It was developed by a community, I mean, a, a committee of individuals made up of parents, teachers, administrators, um, uh, community members, and um, university staff that looked at it um, and walked through and developed it. And so each, the district has an improvement plan and each campus has a, a continuous improvement plan. So as you can see, um, noted as well, um, you've got Palestine's continuous improvement plan, Longview's continuous improvement plan on here. And I apologize, it looks like Tyler's continuous improvement plan was left off. But, well, I guess we can add that to next time, but you already have a copy of that. Um, so looking at this, again, these are plans that really are working documents. You can change them at any time. You can add to them. The plans do align with our charter. Um, and so um, the board does have a copy of them. They will be placed online for parents to look at them and discuss at any time as well. May I su suggest to the board that we consider approving them all at one time. We, we did receive copies of these plans in our, electronically in our email. I don't know if you had an opportunity to review each plan, but it is there for us to review. So unless a board member has, has a strong opposition to approving them all at one time, I suggest that we just, we, even, the, even the Tyler plan is missing. It's in our, mail. It's in our electronic mail. So I would suggest we go ahead and approve the district plan and then the plan for, for all three campuses. That's my suggestion. <coughs> Do we have a board member who will yeah, vote on yeah, your suggestion? Or do we, do somebody just make a motion for to approve all, all the plans. All right. Even the Tyler plan. Make a motion to approve all the plans. 
Okay, we have a motion <laughs> by Mr. Hunter to, <laughs> to approve the, the district plan, the Tyler Palestine and Long Group plans as well. We have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a second by Dr. Dykes. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed say aye. Motion carried. The final uh, action item is the taste improvement. Yes, plan. and so this improvement plan is required to, um, for the board to, um, for approval. Um, basically, as you know, within um, the system, the Longview campus is currently still under um, the support of a PSP, a professional service provider, because they didn't they missed one safeguard. Uh, therefore, within the process, um, the the campus is required to complete a, an improvement plan that aligns with um, the state template. So there is a process um, that the campus and a committee has to go through looking at data, developing a, um, a root cause analysis, and then basically developing activities and intervention that align with those concerns um, and address the annual goals. And so within the plan, it's very specific. The template is required. Um, it has to be on hold in, in the event that the state asks for it. Um, the board has to have a copy of it and approve it. Um, and so you have a copy of it and um, again this is a required document because of the situation that we're in with the Longview campus. And so you can see that we did have a committee that met, they did do a root cause analysis on the campus, they addressed specific areas that they wanted to improve in um, and noted that within the plan. And the plan is on hold waiting um, in the event since we are um, formerly IR the plan did, did not have to be submitted through ICM, and therefore the state can ask for the plan at any time. So it's on hold in the event they ask for it. Okay. Do we have uh, any questions from the board? I have one question. Will, will our Innovation Academy board govern this plan? Will it be governed by the board? Will we be in, in charge of making sure the, the the campus abide by this plan, or will that responsibility be given and authority be given to the university? Well, I mean, I think that really the truth of it is is that um, as you know. Um, as a professional service provider, they're monitoring to ensure that we are following the plan. They're, they're creating a, submitting a report to TEA, um, noting if we're in line to meet our annual goals and if we're actually implementing the interventions that are taking place. As far as monitoring the plan, I think that really goes um, back to the campus director and myself. Um, and also the, the assistant soup of curriculum because we meet with the PSP um, and we provide her the data to support that we are abiding by the interventions and um, that we are on target to meet our annual goals. So I think really um, you could say that oh, the board overall has a, res a responsibility to monitor but you're, you're not in those meetings. And right. so you've really charged me as the leader of the district to make sure that we abide. In the event that we weren't abiding, we would get a letter from TEA, which would then be brought to the board's attention. And that's when it would become a, a concern of the board to say, I'm not really doing my job to monitor the plan. At that point, will that be a board's decision or the university's decision? I think that's still a board decision. Still a board decision. But at this time, we are on target. Um, Dr. Paramore just submitted her first um, PSP report, and we are on target to meet our annual goals. She's very pleased with the overall progress that we've made. As you know, she's been with us for three years um, and has been a great um, supporter of the improvements, and um, it, we're, we've had a great relationship with her. Um, she's just very pleased with the overall progress. As you know, well, she in the past has supported the district, the Tyler campus, and the Longview campus, um, and the uh, Palestine campus. And this year, she's only assigned to the Longview campus. And looking at the improvements, if we continue to make, she will be released um, at the end of the year. Speaking of that, I do want to note that um, as you remember, recall at the last, our couple meetings, um, we had um, Eddie Milam 
come to our meeting. He's also assigned, so this is appropriate to say, because he works with our PSP as well. He's also assigned mm -hmm. to monitor our district. I just received a letter um, this week from the Texas Education Agency releasing him because of the progress that we've made as a district. So he has been released early um, based on the feedback that he's provided Texas Education Agency um, regarding our progress and where we're at in the district. Okay, before we make a, a motion to accept or reject this plan, I would like to make a recommendation uh, to the board that we as a board uh, find out what, a, what governance authority we have as a board, where that line, what, where, that, where, the, where do we draw the line between the instruction, compliance, governance, the application, the implementation of all of these plans and processes and procedures, where do we stand as a board? In, 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 I don't mind researching it for you. Okay. Is that what we need? Is that okay, board? Is that something we need to to do? Because we have parents on this board, and we have people on this board who got, who join the board in order to be able to protect the governance of the charter school. But if we have none, then I think it's only fair that we know as a as a board and individually why we come up here when we do and sit around our table and, and help make these decisions when we really don't have any, th any authority in some areas. I'm, I'm talking to the board. <laughs> I, I would like to hear your opinion are, are on where we are. Do you feel as if this answer, you would like this answer, this question to be answered prior to you voting on this? Yes. No, I, we, we can't, no, because we can't answer that question before we vote. I, I, I think we, ha we have to vote for this, this plan. We either have to accept it or reject it. It would be a, my, it would be a red flag if we if it was rejected right, to TEA right. of why that we rejected our own plan that we created. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. we have a choice. Yeah. My 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 concern is because of, because the governors the, the board our our responsibility as a school board is to govern the district in all facets of the district. But because we are a university charter school, that governance is taken away and given to the university. I'm not complaining about that. I mean, because that's how all university charter schools operate. So my, my complaint is, I don't, I don't think, I don't even think it's a, I don't concede it as a complaint. I just think we need to know as a board what, where our authority lies. That, that's if and, and if if there are issues that the university governs, they don't need to come to the board. They do they? That that's why I need the board members to start considering why we come and sit in these seats every day at these board meetings. If if the if we don't have the governance power. I really to think you, you do have a, a strong voice and power, and I'm just speaking out here as a superintendent because in the event that things are not being um, addressed, um, you're going to take action on, on those things. For example, I wouldn't be sitting here as your school superintendent in the event that if you were receiving letters from Texas Education Agency saying that we're not in compliance financially, we're not in compliance academically, that all three schools did not meet standard, you would have some pretty strong questions to ask me as a school superintendent. Right now, as we're making these improvements, there's, you know, you're able to see the growth that we're making. But, you know, I, th I think you have a very strong voice because um, it starts with me. 
I mean, that you've, you've trusted me to take on and serve as the district leader and ensure that we are in compliance in all areas from everything to operations to academics and um, compliance with our charter. And in the event that you question if we are in compliance, you're, you bring that question to me, I, I better have a pretty strong answer of if we are or not, are you as a board are going to, to follow up and address that. And, and put me on the spot to be able to answer it as well. So um, I really feel like you all have a very strong voice, or I feel like you do, because I, as a school superintendent, I expect to make sure that we are in compliance, or I know I'm going to have to answer to you. And it's my job. You'll answer to the board, I'm sure. sure. But when the board makes a decision, who has the authority at the university level to override that decision? Or can it be? And, and I think that's what I'm asking. Where does, where does it stop? And, and right now, we can't answer that. But Mark just said he, he's going to research uh, that information and then yeah, let us know what the next one. I know that, you, that your first and foremost responsibility is to approve the policy of running the school district, which is a huge thing, which is some of the things you, you've done today. But on the other hand, as, as uh, Dr. Simmons has pointed out, if this the school district is not running effectively. That's your responsibility to govern her or her position. You know, to either uh, put in a plan that, that that it does do so, or put somebody else in that position. So, in a certain sense, you have a tremendous. Does the book stop here, though? <laughs> yes, in that sense, it's, it's only in the curriculum and in Facilities. this whole purchasing. Well, you facilities know, and curriculum are really not under your. Not yeah, under everything her. is under. And me. so I mean, <laughs> yeah. and that's so <laughs> how the how we're running. And it's been an interesting. I mean, the, the the most important thing I'm running is how the kids are doing, and and that's all curriculum. And and I'm and, 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 gonna say this, I mean, that any kind of any of you people on the board have brought up a concern that has led always led to a meeting like, what is this concern because we need to address it because we respect everything that the board says and what the board stands for. So we, uh, the, the charter school looks at you as a real governing board in the sense that, that we just totally respect any concern that you have. And uh, if it's something that you bring up a concern, it's something that can be addressed, that's not addressed by state law, then I guarantee you that, that everybody on this staff looks at it. Right now, it's, it's, I don't know if it's a board concern, it's my concern because I'm not hearing it from anybody else on the board. So it may not be a board concern. It may be just my concern. But I am concerned that, that, uh, that we're in this position. Can I make but, a comment? Just as a, as a representative of UT Tyler, I think it's, a, it's, it's vital that there's dual governance, that you all as a board hold the university accountable that if the university chooses a curriculum, that you all make sure that curriculum is functioning and that Dr. Simmons is pushing that down to the level. And if it comes to where that's not good curriculum, then you as the board hold UT Tyler accountable for making those changes. So I, I do think it's, it's vital that you all are involved, even though you may not make the decision that's assigned to UT Tyler, you hold UT Tyler responsible for making the decisions that's in the best interest of of the charter school. And that's happened. I mean, and when the that's times true. that we were struggling, I mean, it's just, several of you brought up some great questions to say, you know, what are we doing with uh, to support our math students? That was the transition we made early on. Um, we went from project-based learning to problem-based learning to make that transition to support our students. And, and when there was, we struggled with alignment with the curriculum and projects across the, um, the curriculum. So, you know, your voices are very strong. Um, it's, you know, and again, I feel that I answer to every one of you um, and that in the event there is a concern, um, I have to be able to address the concern and um, make sure that there is a plan in place to take action to make the improvements. And on the other hand, too, guys, when it comes to finance, there's been times that I've talked to the finance department here at the university and say, look, do you want to go before the board and explain to them why you are not operating way that you want to in, in accordance to our charter and according to state law and uh, you know that kind of helps them to rethink how what kind of documents that they want to provide for us so you 
you guys, as far as you are concerned, have a lot to do Can we go ahead and make a motion to accept this TAIS improvement plan and then reserve this conversation until the annual board training and the discussion? Yeah, that's good. Okay, and I think that's what we need to do. It's our last action item. So what we'll need is a motion from a board member to, to accept the TAIS improvement plan. Do we have that motion? I will make a motion that we accept the TAIS improvement plan. We have a motion by Mr. Flynn. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Mr. Alder. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those who oppose it say aye. Um, motion carried. So um, we're down to the information item. All right, so looking at the superintendent report, um, item A is the first rating report for 2014-2015. As you know, the report is a year behind, um, and so um, I'm, at this time I'm going to turn that over to Mr. Parkinson to discuss. Each board member should have a copy of that document. So, do you realize this is actually covered by the year of operation? This year, uh, we did pass, we passed, the maximum score was 30. So as far as our, as far as TEA is concerned, as far as our external auditor was concerned, our financial records are exactly what we're going to do. Posted uh, on the website, it's also posted in the newspapers, and you guys have to have access to the approval for us. Uh, not all of them because we didn't make perfect first year so this is an improvement and I, I just want to note that um, I want to thank the administrative department led by Jay McCrier, um, Christian Moyce, Linda Butler. These ladies have put in extensive hours along with Mr. Parkerson um, to really look at this report in detail, really hold TEA accountable to give us answers when our, the, the questions that they're asking do not comply with the university charter and sometimes some things that they're requiring us to submit or have we don't have. It's against the law for us to have. And so having to go face to face with them and explain to them why we don't have it um, has been very powerful. And that's where really our relationship with TA all really stemmed from is when we started really looking at this first report and questioning them, they really re started respecting us and realized we really had a strong voice and knew what we were talking about when we showed them data to show that we couldn't do some of the things. Um, but this didn't just happen. And th there have been individuals in this room that have put in countless hours to get this rating and this score. And I, I want to personally thank them for that. We had a passing score of 16, David. I'd like to point out that that particular uh, audit was done um, over the fiscal year that we made the the change of the finance people saw. Um, and we also changed the finance manager uh, in the midst of that. So uh, you had a person trying to complete an audit over a transaction that they had never had their hands on. Um, Passing and we were going to do software, um, which was not easy at all. Uh, so then we get a perfect score. Uh, and we were in the midst of those two major transitions. So again, we did receive the highest score, and I just want to note that. Very pleased. Um, we're actually working on our audit now. Um, these ladies and, and gentlemen are, are working on the audit now for next year, or for yeah. last year. Um, so, so a part of this information is that we have posted on our website the superintendent's contract that they've got to copy pass it around. Um, Every school district is supposed to do that. Um, and what's posted on, on, on the website for us is pretty much uh, the right kind of posting of salary. Uh, but if you do check the website, I try to check 43 websites, and only two of them post the two salaries. So a lot of schools break the right law out there with that kind of stuff. And I want to note since. Um that it is an I, I serve as a school superintendent as an at will employee just like the teachers serve um, I do not receive additional benefits that most school superintendents receive um, my benefits are aligned directly with the same benefits that every UT Tyler staff member receives so um, I, I do want to just note that as well so I think that that's important to know that I don't stand above the staff and have a separate 
contract. Um, it is a at-will agreement that I have with the university, um, and it is a year-by-year -year agreement. Okay. I don't understand all the work that went into this, but I've been sitting here for years and hearing about the difficulties that we've been running into, and to do what y'all have done, uh, I realize, I appreciate the fact that that was not easy, and thank you. 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 Um, the next item is the Texas Academic Performance Report. Um, basically, this is a report that um, it's an annual report card and something that's generated by the state. The state does an annual report card for the district, an annual report card for um, each campus. The report card covers everything from the demographics of the campus to the accountability um, rating of the district or campus. Um, it looks at the number of teachers, and it's really just a, but I, it's a report card, and it covers a little bit of everything. So um, these report cards will be posted on the website so um, that parents can access them. They can also access them through the Texas Education Agency, um, and um, you also receive a copy electronically. And so, um, again, does anybody have any questions about the academic report? Um, performance report cards. The next item is item C, which is our district enrollment. Um, you did receive a copy um, of our current district enrollment, so you can see where we're at currently. Um, looking at Tyler, we're at 243, Longview's at 143, Palestine's at 164, with a total of 550. Um, you can see that our annual attendance rate is 97%, um, um, Tyler's 97, Longview's 96, um, and Palestine's 97. I do want to note that is the highest attendance rates that we've had since the beginning of the district. Um, and I want to um, compliment our directors and admins. These individuals contact students daily, follow up with parents, host meetings with students that are truant, our students that are struggling um, with attendance. So I really think that is in part to all the interventions that we have in place to um, follow up with parents in the event that a child is out. Any questions regarding district enrollment? How stable is the 550? Um, I, it's pretty stable. Um, yeah. Yeah. But not losing 15 games. No, it's, it's pretty much, and we do that marketing campaign that starts over the holidays. Yes. For spring goal. Okay. But it's, it's been pretty, pretty stable for this. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. The next item on the agenda um, is benchmark assessment. As you know, we um, recently gave a benchmark assessment. I'm going to turn that over to um, Mrs. Peterson at this time. Okay. Um, we gave benchmarks um, last week of October, and they were full release star assessments in um, all subjects except for math. In math, we used the ones that we created last January just because the state has not come out with full release of the new standards. So for 2015, they only released partial of the math ones, not the full ones. So we felt very confident in our January um, test we created last year for the uh, math benchmarks. Um, so we used those. And you can see um, there's basically three pages here. The first one is um, a rundown of how our kids did on the EOCs. Other than algebra, this is the first time we we're taking EOCs. This is the first time we have ninth grade class. The um, blue bars are how our students um, performed based on the passing um, standards that the state has come out with. This year, they have put a phase in between phase one and phase two up until this year. Um, the passing standard has always been at phase one. Um, now that differs on the grade level and the subject. Instead of moving fully into phase two, what they've done is they have put um, something in between that and have had the proposed progression for this year. And so that's what these numbers are based on, that new proposed progression for the 2015-2016 year. Um, again, the blue bar is how we passed at that, and the red bar is how we're looking at um, our kids passing at the final recommended level. Um, 
questions on the ESC? It's increasing the final recommended can be higher. Final recommended is not changed. It is a higher standard, yes. And it's, it's a higher standard. To pass the final recommended is the high is higher than the proposed phase, the new proposed phase. Yes. Yeah, look at English line the, the final recommended. We we're supposed to have a higher percent at the final recommended. Am I misreading that? No, you're not misreading that. That's a type of a here. That's why I didn't know that. Did you have that higher standard? Yeah, I listed. No, they did. They took a complete relation test. They took a complete relation test. This is after three months of instruction. Right, this is after three months of instruction. So we should stop. If you look at biology, biology is pretty impressive down here. Even algebra one is pretty impressive. Oh. Get those scores for English and Long Beach. Well, Jack, what, what do you think? What do you what do you attribute that to the biology scores? Well, um, I will say that the biology passing standard is pretty low. It's only thirty seven. Um, a kid has to. It is. It is at thirty nine that a student has to score at to receive for passing. But. Um, what is that? <laughs> Algebra, the new one for algebra is 41. And that part, yeah, and I'm interesting that, that, and you know what's, what we've all sat and talked about is that, you know, sometimes parents, even though we try to explain to them and, and educate them on how the system works, they assume passing with 70 or above. And so when they think their child passed, they're thinking, oh, my child passed with a 70 or above because that's what they connect passing with. And oftentimes we have to say, this is, you know, when we're recommending the child participate in interventions and then the parent says, but they passed star, then we have to go back to say, yes, they passed, but understand the passing rate was at a 41%. And we feel like there, there still are some gaps there that we could support your child on. As for science, though, in large, I will say that we have a science coach time this year that um, is a true science expert. Um, we've got some phenomenal biology teachers, but also to speak to our model in STEM, we emphasize science every single grade. And that's not as typical in a normal school district. They may slack off of it in third and fourth grade or in sixth and seventh grade because they're not tested years. And our model really revolves around science. Every single PBL we do, we have a strong science emphasis. So science is really one of our stronger partners. Can you quickly go over like algebra? What is the final mm -hmm. the, the proposed standard? Proposed standard is forty-one. Final is sixty-three. Mm -hmm. What's English proposed standard? Uh, Fifty-seven. And then final is sixty-four. Okay. And then we have thirty-nine. And biology is proposed standard. Yes, and sixty-one is final. And there's a chart too that we could we could get you a copy of that really shows kind of final advanced. So, what do you think, based on where we are right now in the proposed standard and the percent of students that we have currently at a third of the semester, a third of the year, that at the end of the year we would be close to that final recommended? All right, that's, that's the exciting thing about this year, and you can see if you look at the other chunks that we'll get to in a second. You know, in years past at this time, it was kind of panic mode to even say if we were going to pass right, the next one. Time. And we were all sitting around this table right. wondering what the pain of our it's school was. Mm -hmm. This year, it's very exciting to see that we're in a place that we know our students are going to pass. Mm -hmm. I'm now charged with how many mm -hmm. students can I get to pass that we'll get to. And yeah. that's an exciting place to be. We'll it's a much different place than we were okay. sitting in last year. Is this our third, best right? guess at what we think will happen at the end of this year, or is this where these kids are at on this test day? This is not our best guess for what they'll be okay. at. Right. So, yeah. so yeah. this is the third. third. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. 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 third. Yeah. I just want to make sure that this wasn't projecting. No, this is this is data. Yeah. Right. If our kids would take a start right now, this is a good one. So we've got several more back to the Right, right. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The second um, 
charts I've provided were for the rest of the grade levels. So these are the star grades three through eight. The red and blue here means something completely different. So, so this is all combined. It's all combined, yes. I didn't break it down by grade level, but I can if you want me to. I can send that to you separately. Um, I broke it down by campus and then by district. But the blue on this, this was exciting to me, especially on the math chart, which is what we've struggled with the most in the past. The blue is where our students stand right now at the new proposed progression. On the, the red is that, remember we gave the exact same test last January. So that red is where our kids were last January on a lower standard because that was at phase one. And that's for every chart. So you're comparing the exact same test, exact same test on all subjects. After three months versus after exactly a third of the way, and after. with a slightly higher standard of passing. Last year was phase one. This year, long proposed. So basically, um, if you look across the, all the assessments, a student needs to get around three to five questions. Um, more about three, three to five more questions correct this year to just get a passing standard than they did last year. So a th third grader last year may have had to only get 28 questions right on the test. Our third graders this year have to get like 32 questions right on the test in order to get that same passing. The passing rate that will only that's the only rate that will change. The advance is set. And set for the duration of the test. The um, final level performance is set. It's only that passing rate, that in that satisfactory standard that every so many years the state is going to increase it to say. So, you know, we look five down, years down the road, a kid's going to have to get, you know, 35 or 36 questions, whereas a kid last year had to get 28 to pass the same test. On this second report that I provided you, that's what the red and blue means on every um, chart except for the writing. The writing last year, I did not have true data to show you where we were last January because what was recorded in our DMAC system was only our revising and editing section. We had not recorded our compositions into that score. So what I provided you on the writing is just how currently our fourth graders are doing versus how our seventh graders are doing right now. Um, and that writing test has changed. In the past, the students had to write two compositions. It was a narrative and an expository. Usually the narrative carries that expository, especially in a fourth grade, because it's a much easier to write a narrative. So um, I'll tell you, I sent these reports to Odell on Monday night, and his first question to me is, what's going on with writing? Mm -hmm. Well, if you look at the fourth grade, they've barely been exposed to expository writing at all. In fact, it's barely, barely in our first quarter scope sequence, and that's when this test fell. So, um, We'll definitely make gains in that exposure for writing. But this year, the writing test is the revising and editing part still, but it's only an expositor that the state is taking away from that. And it's in a one day testing. One day instead of two. two instead of over two. And that's a change that the state has made. The state also has made the change where they've taken out all the field questions on all the assessments. So there will be no field questions. Bottom line, what they're wanting to do is look at the, the window. Currently, there's a four hour window, and they're wanting to narrow that window down. And they're not going to narrow that window down this year. They're going to use the data from this year to determine if they're able to narrow the window, meaning that in the future, we could look at a test being students only get given you know two and a half to three hours to take the assessment versus four hours now don't quote me on that nobody knows um, but that might be something that they look at based on the emails that we've received stating that we're not going to look at the four-hour window at this time we are going to use data from this school year to determine if we can look at that in the future for 2017 but there will be no field questions in all areas and actions that we're looking at they are trying to um, to minimize the test sum. I mean, sure. you know, and not make it so long and so long. I, I don't know if you folks checked on the, the newspapers today, but the, the government just passed a new stickly type. Uh, we did. did. And waiting on Obama to sign it, but evidently it's going to reduce testing and it's going to uh, reduce some of the problems that are testing associated with it. Uh, we were looking at some testimony yesterday, and I told us the campus was just like 30 something. Trust the district. 
Any the questions? Page, sorry. Okay. One more page. The last page there was just to show you currently how many kids in each uh, subject on each campus we have already performing at a final presentation. We'll repeat these tests in the union. Give another full one, but it will be the 2015 for this test. So it will be the ones that gave last year. And um, we'll compare to how far we've come the next item is item F, the annual board training. I basically just put this here just to make the board aware that um, we will be looking at having annual training, which is a requirement um, to serve on the board in the spring. So we are looking at some tentative dates. We'll get those dates out to you um, so that you can um, reserve those. And Jam, if I'm correct, it's a, we're trying to get it into a one day session versus two. We're, that's what we're trying to work on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we are looking at that to get that scheduled. Any questions about that? Item G is marketing. As Mr. Parkerson noted, um, we are looking at some options. I know that we're starting at the radio campaign on, in all three areas. Um, we are currently doing some campus tours. If this is the time that parents are probably going to make the transition, um, this is probably the window for that. As you know, the semester will end um, shortly after we return from the break. In the event that a parent is interested um, in making a transition, now again the window. Um, most parents are not going to transfer their child in the middle of um, a semester. Um, so we are looking at our marketing campaign. We're focusing on uh, a campaign that looks at it now currently accepting transfers. We do have some openings um, throughout each campus in select grades. We do not have an opening in all grades. So um, it just really depends on the campus. We were talking today. Um, you know, Miss Dennis noted that she doesn't have any openings in her, her higher grades. Um, has select openings in our lower grades, whereas the opposite may be in some of the other campuses. So um, we are looking at some other options, as the board may know that we did try some ad advertisements at the movie cinemas that we got a lot of good feedback from, from parents that actually came in over the summer and said that they heard about our campus um, through advertisement at the cinema. Um, and we also are looking at some posters and banners in the malls. Um, we've noticed that there are some schools that are, are utilizing that audience as well. Um, and so we're looking at, at, at different options that we can touch base with the community. It still amazes me that the number of people that do not know that we exist um, and the assumptions that they make about our school. Um, I'll share with you just briefly. I was sitting in Starbucks the other day by a couple. They happened to start talking about our school. The lady began to share that um, she her, her grandson goes to the school and was sharing with the gentleman how pleased they were and she didn't know me from Adam and I'm sitting there just over eavesdropping as she's sharing with him about our school and um, he said yes I, I've actually looked at that school for my son but I heard it's only for university employees so he his assumption about our school because it's the University of Texas at Tyler Innovation Academy that it was only for our university employees children like it was a school within the school only for professor students um, and so it's interesting the assumptions that are out there about our school and they differ in every community um, and so you know that's something that we're um, talking with parents about I had coffee with the Longview parents um, I have a coffee meeting scheduled with the Palestine and Tyler parents next week basically just to sit at a round table to say what's on your mind what are concerns you have what are we doing really well at um, what can we do to better support you and then charging those parents with marketing our school if you're so pleased with you know the system that your child's in help us this is a way that you can help us to get the word out um, and so had had some really good conversation with the Longview parents so that's just kind of overview of where we're at currently on marketing any questions
The next one item is H, the STEM coach um, visits. I just wanted to update the board to let you know that, you know, as um, you know, we were awarded um, and we are a STEM district and each campus is a STEM school. We do have a STEM coach, Dr. Sots. We met with her on Monday and, and she has also visited every campus and sat down with directors. During this time, she really just challenges us, questions us about, you know, different avenues, everything from how we, how we supporting students through STEM, what activities are we utilizing, looking at course schedules, looking at teacher um, qualifications. Um, you know, she really is, um, just holds us accountable. Looks at, you know, to yesterday's conversation really stemmed around high school and how do we look at student transcripts and how do we create transcripts and how do we ensure that transcripts are aligned with the state laws. Um, so, um, Really good conversations. She's um, been a great coach that we value and look at, you know, and, and really um, value the the critique that she provides us to ensure where that we are. From? Mark, where is she? No, no, I mean, this, this what is who, who pays her? What is oh, no, she, no, she, no, yeah, uh, consultant that no. we hired. Mm -hmm. or? No, she's assigned to us by the it, state. It, 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 Every STEM school. So she's sitting every, to an auditor to make sure that we. Not so much that. Um, she's she she's more of a of a, a coach because she 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 has no power. She has no authority, but she just has a tremendous background in STEM practices. And whenever she walks in, she says, "Have tried this and thought about this. I saw this source. I saw this resource. How are you doing this?" And you know, she dresses everything from operations yeah. to curriculum. Um, she really challenges us to really think outside of, you know, our arena, you know, not, you know, and so, um, and since inception of STEM designation in Texas, every STEM designated school has a coach that meets with them. It used to be monthly, but now it's just four times a year. But, uh, so there's a hundred schools. Is there, when we received that STEM designation, we got that how? We applied for it. Okay. And it's a, they come and do campus visits. It's just a paperwork. <laughs> But they were thing, a, or, or, a pretty good size application process. It was reviewed by TEA. Uh, they determined what we were doing, what we said we were going to do. Of course, we're doing so many things already because we're familiar with the process. So it was a pretty easy step for TEA to designate us as a, as a STEM district. And there's requirements within that that we have to comply by that she's really making sure that we are in a line with and, those requirements. And the, there's, a, there's a STEM blueprint in Texas for STEM schools. And if you'll go back and look at our charter, our charter built around that blueprint. So. But we're the only school in Texas that's like us, right? UTPB, University of Texas, at Herman Basin, is doing a lot of the same things we're doing. We have to write their charter and we provide professional development for them. So uh, they're doing a lot of things we're doing, but they're not ready to be a STEM designated school that may operate on the way that we operate our charter. But we're the only university based charter that's a STEM. School. Yes. Yeah. Sure. So that's why we're operating in the dark. They don't have a they don't have a blueprint already. <laughs> right, right. We're the only university charter that stepped into the high school arena. Yes. In fact, at the meeting that we attended in San Antonio, basically over the table said, You're crazy. <laughs> you know. The other charter, yeah, yeah. The other <laughs> charter schools looked at us and said, You're crazy, but we're glad you're doing it first. And so take notes because we will need all the help that we can when we get ready to step into it. Um, so uh, it, it's definitely, we learn, we have some growing pains along the way, without a doubt. But with the support of these individuals, it's, it's very helpful. Um, the next item is just the holiday celebration. I just want to remind the board that, that uh, and, and just confirm that you did receive an invitation for Tuesday, December the 15th at six o'clock um, for a time just to, to thank you and celebrate with you and your um, spouse um, in honor of the holiday season. So hopefully you'll get to join us and that is at six at Villa Montes here in Tyler. Um, the next item um, is personnel updates. I just want to note that, you know, one thing that we have learned um, that's been very interesting, um, and this even came up during our meeting, is that, and as I noted as a at-will employee as well, um, all of our staff is at-will, and that is very different than a typical ISD. And so um, just to really get down to the bottom, 
basically what that means is that we can lose a teacher um, at any time without being able to hold their certificate because of the way that um, that that because they're under at will contracts and so that really puts us in a bond um, and it um, has really made us question what we can do um, in the event that we're in situations so basically in a typical ISD as a building principal and a, and a typical ISD as a teacher came to me and said school down the street has just posted a science position that I'm really interested in I've always wanted to work for this school I could look at that person and I could say, I'm, I'm really excited about that opportunity for you, but I'm sorry at this time you've already committed to our school and our students and I don't have anybody in mind to step into that position and I'm so sorry I cannot release you from your contract. Oh. Are, they, are they hired by the board or are they hired by UT Tyler? The um, personnel? Mm -hmm. Well, I would think that it, it's UT Tyler. You did We're all the office, the HR department, but you have delegated the superintendent to, the superintendent to as far as who the okay. So I say all this because sometimes we get a bad rap um, for losing teachers. And I've I've tried to share with teachers um, and 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 staff and parents that we're really in a, um, a tough situation because of the way that charter schools contracts, that, that employees don't have contracts. So again, a teacher can lose, leave us at any time and ISDs know this. So when they have a teacher that goes out on maternity leave or that gets ill and or for whatever reason chooses to leave their district and they're in a bond, they recruit from charter schools because they know that we have no stand to hold a teacher certificate, whereas they do. And so oftentimes, even though a teacher may be interested in even coming to our school during the middle of the year, they can't get out of their contract with the ISD because the ISD can put a hold on their certification. Therefore, then they can't accept our job because they don't have a certification. They have a hold on their certification. And that certification lasts a year. And so... Um, it's really put us in a bond um, and we're trying to look at ways to um, to retain teachers um, looking at promotion plans looking at making sure that when we are hiring staff that we um, we make sure they understand the obligations and um, you know the commitment that they're making to us and our students in our community and see if there's anything out there you know for example we have a lot of teachers that come to us that have bachelor's degree after three years they get a master's degree the truth of it is with a master's degree they can step into other arenas within the district such as an assistant principal or a principal or a curriculum support staff and make you know eight to ten thousand dollars more well I mean that affects them financially and so in the event that a district down the street posts an AP position, that's inviting to our teachers. Now we've made, we've, the university has paid for their degree. They have worked for us for three years, three or so years. But now this, this school down the street has now posted a position in the middle of the year that they are qualified for. And I'm going to tell you that the pool is going to be very limited in December. And mm -hmm. it's going to look a lot different in May. And so the lot, they're likely to get the job. Well, that, that's the half-empty glass view. Yeah. <laughs> the half-filled glass view is we may want to dismiss some of them. And, and we've given and that, that, yes, and we've given that scenario too. ISDs don't like us because they said, wait a minute, you can get rid of an employee at any time. But the truth is, I'm going to tell you, because we fall under the university, I, I, I well, follow the, the I, Okay. I'm going to just say that I follow the same requirements as I did really in a local ISD of documenting employee, making sure that I communicate with them that they're not, there's a plan in place to support them, a growth plan. It is really the same amount of paperwork I did in an ISD that because of I'm under the university umbrella. If I was a separate charter school, I could literally walk into a staff member and say, you know, you're struggling, and at this time, your service is no longer needed. Did you like that? Because we can invite the charter, we can board, <laughs> <laughs> say the personnel can go through the board, yeah. not through the university. Yeah. Now, the advanced question comes to no. the that, That's right, because 
So no, back to I, I don't. I wouldn't want to be in do. that position, to be honest with you, because I want to give everybody a chance. If we've employed a person, we've we've committed to them, and I do want to give them a chance to be successful for whatever reason. The, what I don't like about the situation is we've had a couple teachers leave us recently for our administrative positions to step out of the classroom, and we had no clue, Dr. Vaughn, I mean, Dr. Lamb, that they were even looking. And we literally get a phone call, a reference check from the district that confirms that they've already gone through the interview process. They've really already been accepted. Now they're just doing the paperwork. And that, that, that upsets me because I know how it affects our kids. Because we put this individual through intensive training to, to prepare them to teach project-based learning or problem-based learning. We've invested in them. And I think professionally, they should invest in us a full year. Now, if they get ready in the end of the year and they're ready to go on and look at other positions elsewhere, I support them wholeheartedly and will give them a, a recommendation that they deserve. But to just basically drop us to go to a school district down the street, I have a concern with. And I have no way that we could find it. I, I tried that every that way. way. But is there no way? <laughs> nope. You can, well, yes, I, you can leave, but you can't work for somebody else. For I the followed up with the Texas Charter School Association legal consultant. We even have it in our commitment letters. I'm going to tell you, we took a next extra step. And in the commitment letters that our staff members signed this year, we said that if you do that, if you're not committed, basically, our this commitment is through this, the 2015-16 school year, and that in the event that you try to resign during this time, we will put a hold in your certification. We said that in our commitment letters. It's a bold statement. But guess what? When we presented that commitment letter to the Texas Charter School Association legal um, team. They said you have no room to stand on. It's just a threat. It's just a threat. Okay. It will not hold up because they, they're at will. And law says if they're at will, they can leave at any time. But we have to talk to the legal counsel here at the university, and we can put in their offer letters that if they go through training, whether it's project legislation or PLPW or whatever, and we've invested three or four five thousand dollars in training, that they would be required to reimburse us back. So that's the only thing that we can find right now financially that we could tie to them that in the event that they try to leave us in the middle of the year we could show that training because some of this project that this project lead the way training is thousands of dollars that we we send them to over the summer and so one of the things that we've talked about is that we could tie them to basically to say that you owe the district five thousand dollars. Do we have the ability to change the compensation so that some of the compensation that's going along monthly could be applied as an annual bonus? Bind them to the end, so like you finish the year, so that the compensation doesn't change, but it's distributed differently. That at the start of this year, every teacher they signed that they were returning, we gave them a well, five hundred thousand, five hundred. <laughs> so anyway, again, this goes back to the learning curve that we've had. We put it in writing. We thought we had room to stand on. We had a teacher that basically questioned it with an attorney, and it we realized real fast it didn't hold up. And so it really, again, puts us in a bond of how do we create a, a bond with these individuals can so they don't the want to leave. We can change. you change the compensation? In other words, reduce slightly the monthly, or I don't even know how. I, I don't think that you can. I don't think we can do it. Because that's what we do in the business if you wanted to find someone. That's what you do. I think that we really have a suggest something that you want to note. I'll give you the. Well, I appreciate you saying that. I'll let you stay back. <laughs> okay. Mr. Uh, all, 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 are you interested in knowing where the board governance? Balls. 
Well, I'm curious. Vaughn, I'm going to finish my Look at you. What you are you doing? I'm not done. <laughs> okay. Um, so the personnel updates. So we talked about that. Um, K is January special board meeting. We do have to have a special board meeting before our next scheduled board meeting, which is in February, um, to approve the audit that's currently being uh, taking place at this time. So we have picked a date of January the 14th at 12. So please note that that will be a one item the agenda special called in yes a special called meeting um, that should last I mean yeah so hopefully we might could even look at some of these individuals that travel even um, setting up a zoom for them so they do not have to be on the road yeah yeah. So we'll work on that as well. So that's all the administrative yeah. updates that I have at this time. Again, I want to thank the board for their support. Um, I'm very pleased with the work and efforts of the teachers, the curriculum department. Um, I'm the the directors on each campus. In fact, I was sharing the other day. That I feel like we're in a good position that we have the right people on board that really know what they're doing. They're they're self driven, motivated, dedicated to our district, and I think this is a direct reflection of everything from TA releasing a monitor because they see there's no longer a need for us to invest in that because of the improvements we've made to the report that you've seen here academically to show where kids are already far ahead of where they were years ago. Um, so very pleased with the overall progress the district's making. I do thank you for that. Um, although you, you may not feel at times that you have a voice, um, I say that you have a very strong voice because I feel like that I have to address, I have to answer to you and the community at Broad on everything that we're doing. So thank you for your commitment um, and a special thanks to the individuals at this table because again, I want to note that the success of this school is not because of, of my leadership um, on its own. It's because of everybody at this table working hard every day um, and being motivated to, ins to ensure that we are successful. So thank you to those individuals as well. well we thank you all too for the hard work that all of you do to keep this Innovation Academy up to par. So thank you. We appreciate Thanks. that. But I would like to poll the board members to find out who, who would be interested in Mr. Parkinson investigating or researching our areas of governance to find out exactly what we can govern and what we can't? And this is not in a in a, in an antagonistic way, negative way, but just to turn it positively, to make it so everything that this happened at, at this innovation academy, whether it's us working with DEA and higher ed or trying or our, our directors trying to figure out how they're supposed to be administrators, but not over the curriculum. It's been a learning process for every one of us that has nothing to do with what goes on in the regular high school. So we'll be more than that to try to try to help you. Okay, we haven't heard from Mr. Uh, I'm curious too. You're curious too, so I think that's the majority. So so the board is asking you if you could have that information by January and put can you put an agenda item on the on January? The January. Okay. Uh, okay. Anything else? We talked about facilities in January too. We don't talk about today, but just update for uh, for facilities. Okay. Now I'll put that on the agenda. Hopefully we'll <laughs> yeah. Motion to adjourn. Make Thank you so much. Please get a plate of food if you haven't already eaten. You must have liked the bread. Yes, please. You're uh, yeah.
Well, it's it. We can't change the salary because we have no authority. 